<laughs> All right, so if y'all will turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. We're only going to be focusing on the prayer that Jesus taught today. The prayer that Jesus taught. Media, I also did not let you know last minute additions. Later on, it's going to be Matthew 3 and 2, all words. And then Luke 17, 20 through 21. Um, all words as well. But that's later on. So if y'all here at Matthew 6, verse 10, can we say amen? amen? All right. Now, I'm going to read the entire prayer that Jesus taught, but we're going to be focusing on that particular scripture. If you would allow me to take us to the throne of grace, Lord, we bless you on this day. God, we thank you, God, that you are launching us into nine years of ministry here, Lord, in the Midlands, God. In the southeast, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you have brought together ministers, God. You have brought together ministries, God. You've brought together your servants, God. Lord, because before we carry any title, God, we carry your cross. Yeah. I say that again, Lord. Before we carry any title, we carry your cross, God. We carry the mandate to serve others, God. And we love you for it, God. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifices, Lord that have been given on our behalf, God, not just from Jesus, God, but from my ancestors, God, from my mama, real God, from my grandmother, the people that prayed for us, God. We lift them up to you right now. We honor them as well, God. And we go into this word today, God. Allow it to seep into our spirits, God. Allow it to plant itself and root itself in our spirits, God, that we may leave today changed, God. Lord, we just don't think we've ever made it, God. We know as long as we're here, we never arrive, God. So we just take each day, day by day, Lord, and we just ask that your Holy Spirit come rest, rule, and abide within us on this day, God. Use this word to go forth and accomplish all that it has petitioned to do, Lord, when you wrote it, God, and when you gave it to me in my spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so we are here at Matthew 6. And actually, we're going to begin at verse 9. Jesus was telling them, pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, this is a new revised standard version, okay, so it may sound a little different than your usual King, King James or NIV. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. So ends the reading of the word of God, amen. Y'all, when we were praying after praising worship, I told you that the Lord clearly to me, tired, tired of powerless preachers prophesying promises because they themselves have never been to the promised land. It's sad. I told um, Pastor Rochelle when the Lord gave it to me, I said, it's going to be a hard pill to deliver and swallow. It's going to make me sound like I'm cold and callous. There should not, help me, Holy Ghost. I can only imagine what it's like to be in a, a parishioner, to be a congregant or a member of a church whose pastor has taken his own life. I can only imagine. When I made some unpopular decisions in my own life, people ran for the hills and told, said things to me like, I don't even know how to deal now with God. I don't even know, I mean, I don't understand because the decision that you made in your life, I don't, I, don't, I, don't even, I don't even know what that means for me and God. But imagine the person that's been empowering you and, and, and giving you hope and praying with you and telling you that it's going to be all right and this and the other, all of a sudden decided that, you know what, I don't see hope for me. That might mess you up. I understand my choice of a life partner messes some people up. But that right there, for real, can mess you up. Because it's like, if you're the person that had been telling, it's like your doctor dying, dying of congestive heart failure that was preventable. And they've been coaching you and telling you all this time, all these ways to keep yourself healthy, and they were never doing it the entire time. That would mess you up, because it's like, wait a minute, all the methods that you were telling me, doctor, why weren't you employing them? So why should I continue? You're supposed to be the one that keeps me healthy and tells me what to do. I don't understand. And so it's going to sound hard because I'm just that person. I need for some preachers to 
begin practicing what they preach so that you can speak from a testimony. Let me say that again, because this side I don't care about what I'm I need for some pastors and some preachers and some prophets to begin to speak from a testimony and not just a theory. Theories are getting people killed out here in these streets. I think, and, and, and I, 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 my interpretation of it, and, and what I believe that the Lord, no, honey, I need you to know that you know that you know. You've seen the promised land. You hear me? You've been in the promised land. Because how you going to guide me to a place that you've never been? The blind leading the blind. I can do bad all by myself. Now, hold on now. I, I can do bad all by myself, Pastor. You telling me that I need to hold on and wait on the Lord. You telling me that I need to just buckle down and get Jesus. You telling me and you're not living the kingdom life yourself. This isn't about holiness and judgment. Understand that. But there are people who are expecting you. One of the things I said to Minister Michael Shannon, who drove three hours to be here with us last night, to meet me. Not just to meet me, but to be in company with me, to be in company with us. He said, I've been following you for years. And our connection came, went way back to my phone call a long time ago when I called about a conference or whatever. And my wife and I have known him through different ministries or whatever. We love him. It's one of those, one of those people that you don't even have to know him, but upon meeting them, you fell in love at first time. Yes. You just fell in love with his spirit. I mean, so Michael, uh, but Pastor Michael Shannon now is just a lover of our souls. And there's praise for us and everything. And so he was over there in the corner preaching. Some of y'all saw him. Yeah. He preached to some of y'all. <laughs> it's just in him. It's just all over him. He couldn't help it. He couldn't help it. But we were talking about the kingdom. And I told him something that I, I know the, the Lord told me. How can you expect holiness from people who don't even know holiness? Mm. My God. Yes. 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 He was talking, and I said, you know, this reminds me of something that the Lord gave me about good six months ago, and I thought I was supposed to make a sermon or something like that. And he said, you know how you just, God just drop things in your spirit? You ain't supposed to necessarily talk about it, preach on it, or whatever. It might not even be for you. But how can you demand, preachers, how can you expect pastors, churches, and not, I'm not just talking to leaders here, I'm talking to congregants, because I, your pastor is probably the most lenient person on you. It's the person down the road who's going to judge you the most. Can I tell you the truth up in here? Our pastors, the pastors, they already know who the junkies are. Like we already know who the recovering are. We already know who's still doing some stuff on the side. We already know who's in the recovery. Whatever. We, and we already know to show you grace. It's the person down the pew that's giving you the side eye. So that's why I'm talking to everybody when I say this. How can you expect or demand holiness from somebody who don't even know holiness? I'm not even a whole person yet. I have a mental life, an emotional life, a physical life, and a spiritual life. And if all of those things are in disarray, how you would expect me to walk the straight and narrow with God? However that looks. I'm already out of alignment. The moment my body takes me out and I start feeling pain over something that's preventable, come on, let's be honest now. Everybody ain't reached the point where your back goes out. You know, oh, Lord, I, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> the back goes out. We cussing and fussing, fighting and going on and and, 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 oh, and we going over to the doctor, maybe. And we're doing all this stuff. And then finally, when everything else didn't work, now we want to go and say, well, God, how can we do that? And so we're here at this point now. The vision for this ministry, I'm going to go into it. I'm tired of the by and by. Mm. How many y'all grew up in the old church? It's coming in the by and by. <laughs> After what? <laughs> and see, they used to tell the slaves, this is how they get the slaves. It'll be in your afterlife when you get to heaven. Can you believe that that really sustains slaves going through hell to know that I'll be free 
when I'm dead. And they showed it. Many of us was raised on that principle. Life will be hell. Life ain't fair. Life ain't this. Life ain't that. But when you die, what are the streets going to be paved with? Gold. What's going to be streaming? Milk and what? Money. And so we put all of our stock in the afterlife. And you can abuse me, abuse me, and I'm going to take it. Because in the afterlife, what we have songs for, when I get to heaven, what a time, what a time. What a time. <laughs> Where are we all? When the saints go marching in. <laughs> When the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints, I want to be in the pool my ticket now. <laughs> pull my ticket now. Because there are too many people. What did Bishop say last night? There are people in the world who are living yes. kingdom yes. now. Yes. Who understand God's laws here. Who are not waiting for anybody's by and by. In fact, they're banking on you waiting for your by and by so they can take the now and now, yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. The peace yeah. that you think that you're calling people jerks and, and, and a-holes or whatever, but they're peaceful. Yes, yes I said a-hole in the pool pit. We didn't just meet. <laughs> Get over your reaction so we can move on. <laughs> when the people come in and they establish dominion, Right off the bat, you don't know how to act to those people. You're in your workplace. You've been working for five years. New person comes in, and we want to we want to peg it on race. We want to peg it on gender. But they come in and they establish dominion in your cubicle. <laughs> and you've been passively waiting for the baton to be passed to you. You've been passively waiting for the pro promotion to come your way. You've been passively waiting. But somehow they got the spiritual memo. And they just came right in the gate. First day, first week. Uh, yes. Uh, I wanted to know um, what, where, when I, who I order supplies from. Um, my chair is old. I need to get a new chair. And you, child, you ain't going to get no new chair. I've been waiting for a new chair for, for three years. I didn't get you no new chair. Two days later, staples roll up. You, wait a minute. <laughs> He didn't ask for the chair. He said, who do I order a new chair from? I'm starting this young with Andrew, and I've, I've been talking to Al about this. And he's just like, Mom, really? Yes, we're going to a restaurant, and I'm still working on here with that. Can you stop? Please, please stop asking those people if you can have what's on that menu if you've got money in your pocket. Right. <laughs> Mommy, I don't want I mean, I, it's just, I'm just being polite. You know, you, I mean, we, we live in the South, whatever. They banking on that. Can I have? And he's thinking it's a grammatical thing. You like my English teacher? She asked us, you know, can you? No, can you? No, sweetheart. I'm talking about taking you from being a beggar right. to having dominion. You gotta know what. If you can't, you can't order your food with money in your pocket with authority. How are you not gonna ask for peace? Ask for house. Ask for car. Uh -uh. It's time. Review 
look at me. And 15 years from now, that five-year-old will be your boss. And you'll say it's racial. And you'll say it's gender-based. I'm not excusing the social order of the, of the day. But oh, if I can just get a group of people to just blame it on race, they'll never begin to speak power. They'll never begin to speak what they call truth to power. The real power. This is a spiritual wickedness in high places. Y'all do realize those high places aren't just some, some people battling it out in the heavenlies, right? The high places is your mind. Y'all understand that that work that they that was published a long time ago, how to break a slave, how to break a Negro, that was built on woo, principles of the universe. If I could just get you to say, I am a slave. I am second class. I, how many times have you ever said to yourself, you know what, it's going to take me twice as long to get half as far. How many times you talk about the man how you talk about your gender? Well, because I'm a woman, or because I'm a man, or because I'm a whatever. Let me get back to the scripture. Are you really ready for the kingdom? Because verse 10 says, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, in kingdom right there, that word, like I had to look it up. That thing threw me for a loop. That word there, the Greek word, basilia. Basilia. Kingship, sovereignty, authority, rule, kingdom. Sovereignty stuck out to me. When you say your king, see, in the actual Greek of that, the words your aren't even in there. It's not even, your not in there. We attribute the your, God's kingdom come, God's will be done. Your's not even in there. It's kingdom come, will be done. Now, I'm not trying to take God out of it. There was an understanding, though, back in that time that everything was God. It wasn't just this third-party man with a white beard who sits on a cloud. Okay? Everything was God. That's why they end up having so many elemental gods. Because they recognized that God was everywhere. So they began to erroneously assigning different little gods to everything. There's one being. There's one entity. There's one God. So kingdom come. It was already assumed that it was God's kingdom. So the sovereignty, now this is what really got me. I'm like, oh Lord, we don't even know what we're saying. When we say that prayer, Jesus is swift. I love Jesus the teacher. That's why last year we got into uh, taking Jesus off the cross and putting him back in the temple to teach us. Oh, I just, uh, a couple of little sacrificial, oh God, sacred cows just fell over. <laughs> Some of y'all look at me like, take him off the cross. <laughs> Do you realize Jesus actually had a real ministry before he jumped up on the cross? He got on the cross and everything just started for many Christians. Y'all understand that for many Christians and most Christians, the ministry started at the cross. The ministry started long before the cross. The cross is a culmination of the ministry. So what we've been doing here at the way is going back and looking at what he taught. Because once your sins are forgiven, how are you going to live then? He was telling you, see, so many churches miss that because they just teach the cross. Well, okay, my sins are forgiven. I'm not condemned. Now how do I live? And they go straight to Paul. A recovering yeah. <laughs> Christian serial killer who is laden with you. He's going to live his life a whole lot differently than you who hit not slaughter Christians. He's going to live his life a whole lot differently. Jesus told you how to live. As soon as he released the blessing, and as soon as he went to be with the Father, he sent the Comforter to guide you. He had already told you everything you need to know on how to live. So that's why we go back. And he said, your kingdom come. Your sovereignty come. Authority come. Now, sovereignty is the supreme power or authority. Mm -hmm. Now, here we go. Mm -hmm. The authority of a state to govern itself. Self-government. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me back that up a minute. Because I'm always saying how I want God to run my life, rule my life, and all this good stuff. So wait a minute. But when I say kingdom come, I'm actually saying. You hear me? It says the authority of, authority of a state to govern itself. Y'all should see 
How y'all looking at me? Like, what she gonna say next? Or, oh my God. Are you really trying to say we're all divine? The other word for sovereignty is jurisdiction. Dominion. You remember how when you were a young person, it happened, some of y'all, it happened really young, like 14, when you thought, you know what? I could actually go and live my life. I wish I was grown. I wish I was grown. For some of y'all, it was 17, 18, whatever. And for some of y'all, it was 19, and you still fighting it. I don't want to go. I don't want to adult. It looks hard. But some of us thought we could be grown when we got 12. And then the ones who had to be grown at 12 to let you know it ain't always cracked up to be. But anyway, you remember how you wanted to have dominion over your own self. And you want to have jurisdiction over your room. Remember when you thought your room was the least space in your mama them house? <laughs> Anyone else have those crazy mamas and grandmamas and daddies oh, yeah. that want to tell oh, you? Let me take the door off, look, and then he'll just stand. Right. And tell you just how much you own up in this house. Come home and your whole room cleared out. You have no possessions, no assets. You have jurisdiction nowhere. I'll step in this. Andrew cracks me up because he's just like, well, you know, we're still so nice. He are just so nice, you know. And wait for him to answer and stuff like that. That's so, you're supposed to do that. Boundaries, that's right. He's a 16, about to be 17-year-old young man. Anything can be going on the other side of the door. And she's a grown woman. <laughs> mama, mama, who says you have zero jurisdiction in this house. <laughs> I'm prepared to see whatever I must see, whatever. I'm trying to catch you in anything anyway. He's slick too, boy. That's the computer. Tams the hook close. <laughs> you went on Google Classroom three seconds ago. Stop lying. Stop lying. I heard it. And I'm not talking about innocent stuff. He'll be watching cartoons and stuff. I mean, just not doing homework. So it's just. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But he thinks he has jurisdiction. And so here's what happened, y'all. When we call that kingdom come. Jurisdiction come, dominion come, self-government come. That's a dangerous call you're making there. And you see, here's the, here's the hitch. Because a lot of the people, now I ain't going to say a lot, but some of the people that have been teaching us the prayer that Jesus taught knows that that's what's been happening. I'm going to go ahead and allow you to call down kingdom, self-government, jurisdiction. And Jesus told you to. Jesus said, begin praying like this. Because my father's children don't have to beg for bread. Can I put it in conversational tone? I've never seen the obedient. See, that's what righteous means. I've never seen the obedient, the aligned, begging for bread. So if you need a thing, just say a thing. If you need a thing, it will come to pass. You have not because you are? That's not. So this is how you need to do it. Because there are forces of the universe and, and God's atmosphere, spirituality, that comes into play when you say, I'm ready to govern myself according to the laws of God. Mm -hmm. Thy kingdom come. Dominion come. I'm ready to take responsibility for myself and my journey. And we've said these things flippantly. You said these things flippantly. Have you ever had, I mean, when you were a child and your mama said, oh, okay, you grown. Right. You didn't know what it meant when you used to say, I want to be grown. Oh, you want to be grown. All right, okay. So how about no lunch money for you for the rest of the week? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, 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 see, because that's what comes with being grown. You got to make your own way. Well, how about I go ahead and take all the stuff I bought for you out of your room and see how you do without your stuff that I purchased because you're going to grow people back for themselves. Let's see how you even get to school because we stay outside the school district. So we, I got to, uh, how you going to get to school? Because grown people have their own transportation. And the kid didn't realize what comes with self-government. And so you start making all these rash decisions and, and all these 
these different things. You set all these wheels in motion that sound familiar. You start setting all these wheels in motion and you then you start thinking it's God. It must be God trying to punish me or trying to sin. And so he said here, your kingdom come, your will be done. Will there is thalama, God's wish, desire, or will. And I, I've taught this one before and I said, when I, when I drilled it down, I told you that it's probably, I'm just going to read this definition to you. Properly, a desire or wish, often referring to God's preferred will, i.e. his best offer to people which can be accepted or rejected. I taught, I don't remember if it was 9 a.m. PH or in the service, when I was probably prayer night. And I was talking about how when you say a thing and you seek God's will, God is going to offer you the path of least resistance. The fastest way from point A to point B, whatever your point B is. The path that's going to be less resistant to you. But there's a lot of times when we say, you know, we want God's will. And God comes in and he says, well, here, here's a way to get there. I know my child. If I have you jump through these hoops, you're going to quit. So I'm going to send it this way. And you can accept it or you can reject it. And we let things inside of us, how society says, you need to go through some things or whatever. And it comes and it looks a little too easy. And you're like, wait a minute. That can't be God. Because we got self-sabotage. Self because we got these things. Y'all have seen them where people are posting stuff online or, or in, in books or whatever that says, your, not just your plan, you and your destination or your destiny. And it's a straight line. And then over here, it says, you and your destination with God. It don't have to be that way. I'm here to free somebody. I'm here to free somebody. It doesn't have to be that way. See, the only problem is, the only difference is, in order to get from point A to your destiny in God's plan, you're going to have to confront some things and do some personal work. You're going to have to learn how to say no. You're going to have to tell mama to hush. And so we said, we ain't doing all that. <laughs> now granted, I could have gotten there a, in a year instead of 10 years. Can anybody look back at that journey and say, you know what, this could have been shorter for me. Right. Am I the only one? Yeah. This could have been shorter for me. And so we opt over him because people have told us that walk with God is a difficult walk. And you have to go ups and downs and roller coasters and round and bow and all this stuff. And so we welcome that journey when God tried to give you his will. His will is that you prosper. First of all, you got to know God's will. You got to get in his word. And you got to know God's will before you say, your will be done. Anybody ever said yes to something before you understood the conditions of it? Before you say, God's will be done. Because when God, when you were sitting there, you say, well, God, your kingdom come. I'm ready to run this. I'm ready to have alignment with you and order, let you order my steps. And I'm going to be, I'm going to self govern I'm going to stop blaming. Y'all understand, that's what goes with kingdom. You don't blame anybody anymore. Circumstances happen, but you don't play the blame game anymore. You hold, your, you hold yourself accountable. Accountability, that's mature. And that even includes the devil. Oh, man, we don't even get to claim, we don't even get to... Uh, but I don't understand. The devil thought he had me. It's a good song. The devil thought he had me. I love that song. But I can't blame the devil for some of the dumb stuff I've done. Come on now. Come on now. The, the, the scripture goes on to say, lead me not. Obviously, temptation can get me. So God, don't lead me over there. And God tries not to lead you over there. But just as sure, just as sure as you try to take that child out of Chuck E. Cheese. Here we go. But I want to stay. I want to stay. One more game. I want to stay, God. And your parents are like, no, honey, one more game, and we're going to be caught here forever. It's going to cheat you. You ain't going to get no prize. Let me say that for somebody who needs to hear that. That game gonna cheat you. You don't get no prize. Oh, it's already rigged just to take your money. Oh, right. 
about five people that don't believe in prophecy, just repeat that. <laughs> Minister Benjamin says, you'll get it, lady. <laughs> you'll catch it, lady. You'll catch it, lady. Like you need to leave Chuck and Cheese <laughs> because the game is rigged. Yeah. Andrew and I personally know somebody who used to be in upper management. The game is rigged, okay? <laughs> His dad used to be a district manager of Chuck and Cheese. The game is rigged to take your money and give a prize out to the only one, every 20th person, all right? I'm just going to break it up. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there and just put it out there. It ain't got nothing to do with how cute you look. They don't have anything to do with how much money you spend and all this good stuff. They got to take it. It's all right. Let me move on, Jesus. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I said this when we were when I was out here now. Uranus, heaven, the atmosphere, the spiritual heavens. I told you, when you say a thing in the heavenlies, it happens just like that. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's like Pastor Elise says, you're already healed. Your body just got to catch up with the healing. That's it. That's it. It's already done. So when you want that to happen, I told y'all time and time again, Pastor Rochelle and I are living a Malachi 310 life. And it's funny because I never opened the doors to that because my old pastor would say, how many, he said, how many of y'all have ever, he said, we never get there. He said, we never get there. How many of y'all ever can you imagine the imagery of God pouring out a blessing that you don't have room to receive? He said, imagine you get, you're trying to open a, a, a door. He said, you remember how the snowfall used to be like in up, up north, whatever, and if you didn't close your door, it would just come right on into your house and you're trying to push it. He said, have y'all ever had a blessing or felt like you were so blessed that it just, you can't even close the door on it and close the windows, it's just coming in. And of course, everybody, no, 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 no. And he would say, well, imagine. And he would say, and oh, this ain't even biblical. I love my old pastor, but this wasn't even biblical. And he would say, well, if we all just came together in a corporate fashion, then that would unlock. And, but because none of us will ever come together like that on that level, we'll never experience the overflow blessing of, of, of God in that scripture. The devil's a lie. Because when I tell you, and some of y'all are going through it too, it's not just me. When I tell you that that thing is real, he said, try me. See if I won't pour out. More blessing than you have room to receive. And let me show you how this plays out in my life. Like I told you, my, my wife just says, stop speaking stuff. Just stop. <laughs> just stop. The last two years of my life have been a whirlwind. A whirlwind. We can't even keep up. We can't even keep up. And if you don't prepare or if you don't believe the word, the blessing will bury you. Y'all looking at me like, honey, I'm just trying to get to the first blessing. You talking about overflow and burial. <laughs> <laughs> but because you're connected to a house, listen to me. I need to talk to your spirit right now. Because you're connected to a house that operates in the supernatural. There are things that are going to happen to you a lot faster and a lot Can I get a witness, Crystal? And a lot faster. Can I get a witness, Dan? Can, uh, can I get a witness that's going to happen to you a lot faster and a lot more fulfilling than anybody's religious church that's still trying to follow the letter of the law? Wrong laws. Wrong laws. That's what I love about Jesus. Jesus did teach us about adhering to love, but it wasn't the laws of the Pharisees. It wasn't the laws of the Sadducees. It wasn't the law of those religious teachers. It was the laws of God's universe. Sowing, reaping, compensation, attraction, all these different things, y'all, that the world has put a patent on, selling books and tapes on or whatever. Jesus said it in the scriptures. And we're not even living it in the stuff. We see this new age, anti-Christ. Jesus, I can imagine Jesus going, yo, do y'all really let these people become bestsellers? <laughs> Off of this stuff? You really are. Where in the world did I get, where did y'all get from one store that I wanted y'all to be pouring and pop? This one, one, the widow's might, we've taken that story and we've justified poverty. Just because she was willing to give up. Can we take 
take a lesson from something without adopting it? My God, anyway. The atmosphere. Matthew 3 and 2 says, repent for the kingdom, the kingdom has come near. That's what John Baptist was saying. There's a new way of life that's coming, so I need y'all to change your mind. The way, there's a new way of life that's here. It's not new, it's just new to us. That's here, it's already here. If you think I'm playing, look at people's lives around you who aren't stuck in religion, who understand that as a man soweth, that shall he reap. Bishop told y'all last night, y'all understand in the secular world, whatever that is, God is everywhere, there is no secular world, it's all spiritual. The richest among us are actually the, the biggest philanthropists. You think they got there because they don't give? That goes against the laws of the universe. Bill Gates, Oprah Winfrey, all these people in other countries that would make them look like pop poppers, they finance their whole countries. They give because they know it's coming back. We're the ones with the poverty mindset over in the, world, in the Christian world. Here, three dollars. Baby, what that three dollars gonna do? This place is sixteen hundred dollars every month. Every month, you hear me? Every month. <laughs> Look around you at the people that are regularly here and divide that sixteen hundred dollars of us all, and think about what your share should be. <laughs> I'm just being real. We come here, we want to praise God, and we got a place to worship and everything like that. And it's like, baby. 250 ain't doing much. That'll turn the switch on. And it ain't coming off. I mean, the other 250, 250, whatever might turn the switch back off. And you wonder why you're struggling. This ain't a plug for the church. This ain't a plug for giving. I'm talking about life change. I had to get there at some point myself where I stopped play, playing the paycheck to paycheck game. I wanted to be prosperous. You know what I'm saying? And I began to believe what the Bible taught. I actually began to believe it. And I can't began to say it. And I began in circles where I hear it because faith comes by what? Hearing. And I had to hear it over and over again. And so in Luke 17, 21, see, John the Baptist said, yo, we gotta have to change the way we think because the kingdom is near. And then Jesus showed up on the scene. Look at this scripture. It says, once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. Nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. And the scripture, um, for that among, it says within you. The kingdom is within you. The power is within you already. Now, we're going to move into a time where we're going to be able to say, no, we're here now. When you command that God's kingdom come, you better be ready to receive. You better be ready to release. You better be ready to walk. You better be ready to jump. You better be ready to produce. And don't ask for something you're not willing to sustain. Don't ask for something you're not willing to sustain. I just broke that scripture down to you. I just told you what Jesus was trying to say to us. Thy kingdom, the dominion of the heavens, I bring it down. I'm, I'm ready to establish this rulership in my life right now. Dominion right now. Self-government right now. I understand that I'm supposed to be in alignment with God and with the things that I say and what I do and how I invest and what I give my thoughts to and my time to. Even the scripture says, think on these things. Not the problems. Whatever is loving. Whatever is kind. Do you see that right there in the scriptures he was teaching you how to retrain your thoughts? Do you not understand that self-help gurus charge you $899 for a course that says the exact same thing. Think on it. And for one week in the course, they're telling you to think on abundance. And that was $200. And the next week, think on prosperity. Think on forgiveness. Think. And after that, $1,000 later, you think that you changed your mind. Jesus gave it to you for free. For free. Think on these things. Whatever is lovely, whatever is, and that retrains your thought. I'm speaking to y'all 
about right now. And some people just really aren't getting it. It's a little too heavy. I'll get you. But for the spirit, I'm speaking to your spirit right now. Your head already clocked out. It's already on lunch. I'm okay with that. Because I'm speaking to your spirit right now. When you say the kingdom come, dominion over my own life be established. Thy will be done. I'm going to be on the alert for the ways in which you are going to bring these things into my life and into my path, God, without trying to create my own. You understand? I'm going to wait. When you say wait on the Lord, it's not the wait that you think it is. Be on the alert. Be ready. Can't nobody said it had to be a long way. But you're going to be watchful. You're going to be watchful. And your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, but I've been telling you, you got to position yourself. Because once you start speaking, that thing is coming. It's already here. It's, it's already here. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's already here. Rochelle and I are still trying to get our house situated. Because it came like that. Amen. Amen, it came like that. But because now we understand how this thing works. Before we utter a phrase, we got to start positioning ourselves. Because the more aligned you are, the faster it comes. Uh, I know y'all ain't shouting me down because you're learning something right now. It's messing with your theology. Wait on the Lord. It's going to take time. I understand that Bishop preached about process last night. The process is internal, y'all. It's internal. I got to wrap my mind around the fact that I don't have to work as hard as I thought I did. That's why everybody used to say, just get on your knees. The work is done in meditation. The work is done in your word. The work is done in the company that you keep. The work, the things that you are trying to do by yourself, once you got into a network of people who are trying to do the same thing, and go, it just starts popping off, popping off, popping off. But as long as you try to defend your vision, against people that weren't on the same page as you, and then you say weren't on the same level with you, you kept fighting and fighting and going back and forth, trying to convince them. And then you got with people who say, oh, you want to do that? I know this person, this person, this person, and that person. Come on, let's make this happen. All of us gonna come together. You're looking for love among single friends. You're trying to have a new relationship thrive among single friends. I told you, if you go into a space, either two things gonna happen. You're gonna agree with the atmosphere, or you're gonna be repelled by it. I gotta stand in agreement with people who are on the same page as me. I want good marriage. Let me get around some good married folk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm just being real. I, because they got they got goals and they but how am I only couple that got five single friends? They ain't trying to commit. And if they are trying to commit, they desperate probably build them. Let's just be honest. Next thing you know, you leaving looking at your <laughs> We ain't got no problems, but hang around the build of single friends, next thing you know, we fight. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Let me get around some healthy couples with some goals. You an entrepreneur, but you hanging around with a bunch of people that clock in nine to five. Yeah, I hit something right there. I hit a nerve. I knew if I talked long enough, I'd hit the right nerve. You're an entrepreneur, and you're still hanging around with people that clock in and clock out. Oh, my God, my God. They keep telling you, whether they stop telling you now because they think you're crazy, that you just need to go ahead and get a job. You need to get something that's going to be your backbone. You need something to fall back on. I love Will Smith. He said, I don't have a plan B because it attracts from plan A. Some of y'all might think that's the most irresponsible thing a pastor can say about the pool pit. See, but if you believe on a thing, that's it. That's it. you'll walk in that thing. That thing will manifest. You say, I want to be a homeowner. Stop looking for the next house to rent. I'm saying it from the pool pit. I'm saying it from the pool pit. When you get ready, I'm talking about ready though. Because you look, I told us, I said, you know what? Because anybody can qualify for a house these days, unfortunately. Whether you're ready for it or not. With the right interest rate, they will approve you. And if you haven't positioned yourself, you will not be able to pay that mortgage. And as quickly as you get it, you're losing. But once you make up in your mind, because everything starts with a decision. Once you 
make up in your mind, this is what I want to do. I had to make up in my mind, I wanted to be an independent ministry. I don't want to be a part of anybody's fellowship. I've seen fellowship churches come and go. Unsupported. I said I can do bad all by myself. And look at all the good I've done all by myself. That's nothing against fellowships. We need stronger fellowships. We need legit fellowships. We need people that are really out to help people and not just elevate themselves. Like it, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ministry is like a multi-level marketing scheme nowadays. You place yourself at the top and as many people as I can get under me that bumps me up. It ain't right. But I made that decision and once I made that decision, I didn't court anybody's fellowship. Just in case it don't work out. That's why I'm telling y'all. You decide you want to be a homeowner. Stop courting the rental market. You say you want to be married and this is the one. Throw the black book away. Stop answering the, 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 the stop answering the inboxes.
You've done all that you know to do. You've worshipped. You've prayed. You've meditated. You've, uh, there's some kind of, something's getting caught and lost in transmission. It's like a transistor radio. You just can't seem to get on the right dial. And you feel the need to go out and ask somebody else. There's some alignment. There's some misalignment that's taking place. Cleanse your atmosphere. If you introduce new people into your life, it's time to go on ahead and pull away from that. There's some new practices in your life, it's time to pull away from that or whatever and get back to you and God. Get back. Some of your lives depend on it. You hear what I'm saying? Some of your lives depend on you getting in alignment with God. Some of y'all about to make some decisions. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Make some decisions. That if you wait, if you allow other people to weigh in, they're going to tell you what they're going to need you to do in that situation to benefit them. Do you not understand that when you don't have a clarity about a decision in your life and you go to somebody and they're not supposed to be counseling you, they're going to tell you what's going to benefit them the most. And make it seem like it's a wise decision. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I need. I think I need to make this this change, Daddy, Mama, Auntie, whatever. They gonna start telling you what's best for the family. Right. Yeah. See, and Jesus said, "I'm gonna send you an advocate." Y'all ever heard of a guardian ad litem? Yes. That's somebody who is either assigned by the court to just be that child's advocate. I don't care about daddy, mama, grandmama, the society, the courts. I'm here as this person's advocate. Don't you understand the Holy Spirit is your advocate? And if you get back into communication with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you what benefits you first. The Holy Spirit is not going to cause you to be conceited. It's not going to cause you to be what we have now seen as a negative, selfish. It's going to cause you to be self-focused in a healthy way. It will always tell you what's going to benefit the God in you. The Spirit. I told you that God gave you the desires of your heart. The desires that you have, God gave them to you. Holy Spirit will put you back in alignment with that. Because everybody, and I'm not trying to demonize everybody, I'm not like that person that always talk about haters and this, that, and this. forget that. We're too old for that. We're too grown for haters. Who got time for haters? That's petty. That's, that's old. That, that's, that's, and I can't stand when pastors jump on the hater wagon just because it gets them some amens. We ain't got time for haters. I'm talking about you. Mama gonna tell you what's gonna benefit you. What would benefit her and the family? Unless you got one of them mamas that'll say, you know what, baby? It ain't got nothing to do with me. Go live. Mm -hmm. Grandmama, daddy, friend who said, you know what, I'll miss you. But you gotta live. Mm -hmm. Instead of, why don't you stay around a little bit longer? Mm -hmm. And you know you need to go and do and be. Kingdom come. Church. There's no more waiting on it. We're doing this stuff now. We're doing this stuff now. We're going to be wise with our decisions. We're going to be wise with our steps. But when we say kingdom come, that means I'm ready for this church to be self-governing with God and God alone. We will go where God takes us. We will go where God sends us. We will make sure that we're prepared by the time we get there. You hear what I'm saying? People have been prophesying over us all these years around a building and this, that, and other. See, but we can't have a building until we got the finances to support a building. Because it would be irresponsible of me, a poor steward of me, to sign us for a mortgage when we're barely paying the rent. You hear what I'm saying? Or to move us to a bigger space when I still got holes. You hear what I'm saying? There's more work to do in the community besides feeding the homeless. We've talked about it. We want to become more uh, um, impactful in just the LGBTQ community. Period. But until outreach is in overflow, we ain't going there yet. 
You hear what I'm saying? We got to be in overflow before we move into the next. And I'm believing for that. Because when I say kingdom come, we got to be ready for it to come because it's going to come like that. Because we have power when we come together. We always have. And we end every service and we come together and we speak life over this congregation. I'm talking about a now blessing. I'm talking about a now impact. No more by and by. There are things out. What the Bible said that tomorrow worry about itself. We're talking about now. Can you stand on your feet? I know I've kept you here long, but this is Vision Sunday. This is Vision Sunday. And there are things that are operating in your life right now. The peace that you have been asking for, it's time for you to command peace. Whatever comes of it may come. Aren't you tired of begging for peace? God, just give me peace. Lord, what I would do if I could just go home and not have to work. People say, I'm mean. Because I'll go into a Hush! I want to hear all that. Okay, my approach could be a little, you know, softer. But I go in at the, the dominion. Now, cut all this stuff out. Stop, stop, stop. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Quiet this down. No, no, no. Instead of going in the house mad, I wish these people just hurt sometimes. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. Kingdom come. Today. Now, as we transition to our time of giving, I'm going to just close this out and I'm going to bless the offering at the same time so we can keep moving. And moving on on with our service. For those of you who are use Giveify, 